galloping through the countryside. Before you poo-poo the garage band strings, play with them. Before you go out and spend money on iSymphonic or on a specific string instruments that you can use, check out the built-in strings because with a little tweaking, with some effects and with some knowledge and know-how, you can turn your string sounds into something pretty darn epic. So let's go through the basics. So here we've got uh, we've got four different string parts. I've got the bass, the cello, the viola and the violin, which are our four string instruments. So if we come to a part where they're all playing, you can hear that when we bring them all together, you get a sound that can sound pretty darn cool. <laughs> So what are our options? How do we actually get this happening? So we're going to actually create a new piece. So I just want to, I know I did all that and now I'm going to do something new. So we'll come out of GarageBand there. We'll hit create song to do a new song because to select our strings, no, you don't tap on drummer. <laughs> Sometimes try to slide with the mouse doesn't work. I have to use my thumb. We'll slide across and we'll go to our string instrument. So if we can just tap straight on our strings, uh, we've got a lot of different options down here that'll jump you straight into different sections. But uh, what I tend to do is tap on the more sounds button and then we could choose the type of strings that we're going to throw in here so we've got cinematic modern pop and romantic and these really just change a bit of the tone and some of the attack and the release components you'll hear that as we go through because we'll experiment with a few we'll tap on pop and here is our string layout now you can see here we've got First and second violins, we've got violas, we've got cellos, and we've got basses. So everything is enabled. You can see your little spotlight, and if you tap those on and off, you can turn on and off your different instruments. If we now just grab and tap, we're going to get a pizzicato sound, which is pretty cool in itself, yeah. But if you want to actually get a bowing sound, what you need to do is drag up and down in a particular quadrant. So see the C here, if we do it right at the top here, you get a sound like that, you come further down. Next one. And finally. So you've got four different sections. So if you wanted to have lower string sounds for like some pads, you can just bring that in and... and record those in like that. If you wanted higher, you go up higher. So that's the basics there. And again, just tap it to get your pizzicato. Once again, if we wanted to say just the cellos and basses, remove it there and you've got just your cellos and basses. We'll bring it all back in. Like a lot of our other instruments, you've got an autoplay feature, yeah? So we can turn autoplay on, and if we go to autoplay one and we tap on this one, take a listen. Galloping through the countryside. But here's the cool thing. We've got, not only do we have four different settings here, and I won't show you all of them, you can play in your own time. Uh, we go to this one, let's do it in a D minor this time, shall we? <laughs> That was a bit intense. I'm sorry. Uh, did that make you jump? Surely did for me. Uh, so you got all those options there. But here's the cool thing. Not only do we have those four, there's three variations on each of these four. So let me show you what these do now. Just turn that volume down so that we're not going to blast ourselves. Let's grab it on the C this time. So if we tap with one finger, we get this sound. What about with two fingers? Oh, we get that additional bit. Tap it to turn it off. What about three things if I can very whoop, if I can very carefully tap with three? You get a more complex. So you've actually got with your autoplay, people are like, oh autoplay, you only got four options. Nah, you got twelve options. You can use one, two, or three fingers across your four options, and that's the same across almost all of your instruments. Some only have the four, most will actually have those three variations across the different ones. You can actually edit the chords that you're using. So if you want to go, you, you might be aware that you can actually come in here and you can change your key signature. So if instead of being in C major, we want it to be in F major, we can tap that and it will give us the corresponding chords for F major. Or you can actually customize your chords yourself. You tap on the edit chords button here and guess what? You can change these. So I want to use this E diminished. Well, you can change it to whatever you want. Let's just uh, scroll up here. You can make it a G sharp, sustain fourth with a major seventh and a C sharp in the bass. And then you get this. 
can actually create some ridiculously cool custom chords by doing it that way. So uh, good, good uh, additional bit of info there from Scott. Why don't we record something in? So I kind of like that insane sounding one. So we'll just do something very simple, and we'll do it in uh, we'll do it in F. Actually, I don't know why, but I, I feel, I'm feeling F. So we'll just uh, we'll do the three finger tap, and we'll hit record and do the three finger tap on F. <laughs> There you go. We've got that in there. Where are those drums coming from? Oh, we've still got Darcy. <laughs> we added, I was like, I don't remember there being drums in here. We'll, uh, we'll turn Darcy off now. Uh, uh, sorry, Quincy. Otherwise, we'll get confused. So I've just done four bars there of an F. And uh, what we'll do is we'll just loop that out. So we'll just do a very simple sort of design here, just in, in the key of F or just in an F chord so that you can see what we're doing. So that's your first option there. Let's add another string track now that we've got that bass down. This time, you can see down here, we've got the ability to jump straight into notes. If we tap on the notes button there, then we're in a completely different interface. You can swap between them by using the chords and the notes. So you can go straight back to your chords there, or you can be in your notes here. So this time, we can only select one instrument at a time, your violin, viola, cello, or bass. And to play these, all we need to do is tap and hold on a string. Pretty cool, yeah? And you can, you can slide up and slide down. And if you want your root note, your open string is right down the bottom there. So it's really hard to play with the mouse, but if I use my fingers, you can. So you can start playing in, but you're like, Pete, I don't know how to play a violin. I don't even know what those strings are. Don't worry, we got you covered. You don't need to. <laughs> what we can actually do is use this scale button. So if we want to play in something that's going to go along with our F, we can actually come in here to the scale and we can turn this on. Let's say do it in a major pentatonic scale. So now we can actually move around here. Now, the, the, I've realized that I did that in F and the key signature is actually uh, C, C major. But we'll see if this works. So let's just see if we can record along a violin by just playing in the pentatonic scale here. We'll hit record and... There you go. With no knowledge of what I'm doing, I just went up and down in that pentatonic scale and you get something that sounds kind of right. The cool thing is though, like all MIDI instruments, we can actually change it. So once you've recorded in your strings, you can come in here, tap this one, go to your edit option, and we can change these notes. So we'll just zoom in. So just pinch your fingers in like that to zoom into your screen. And let's just play this back and see if there's any notes in here that we may want to change. That one. So I want this one to be there instead of that note. And we'll, we'll do that there. So let's just take a listen to this and see what it sounds like. Cool. So yeah, we're done. That's, it's as simple as that. And that's with, again, I didn't know what notes I was playing. I didn't know what key I was in. But if you use the scales option there in your strings, it can actually help you do your things. See, that rhymes. And you know that rhymes. Let's uh, come back in here and try something else a bit different. We'll go back to our notes mode. And uh, this time, we want a cello. But we don't want our cello playing, no. We actually want to play some pizzicato notes. And guess what? If we tap and hold on this, now this is going to be hard with my mouse. I'll do, I'll tap and hold with my thumb over here on the left, and then we can tap like that. Now, what about if we want to go to our scale, major pentatonic, no problem. Again, tapping. We can do that. All right, let's, let's try this and record in a little bit of a cello part, shall we? Hit record. You probably couldn't hear that particularly well, so we'll just come out here and solo just that instrument and take a listen to this.
Pretty cool, yeah? So we can actually create a pizzicato sound by using the pizzicato option there and get some string plucking action in our lives. But let me just show you quickly the difference between the different types of strings that we can use. We'll tap on this one. So uh, if we go into our chords mode, in the modern, we're gonna get a sound a little bit like this. Quite a build up, a little bit slower on the attack there. Let's come into the cinematic. You get a more of a hit, right? Like a faster attack and a more of a hit on there. What about our pop sound? Again, more of a pad kind of sound to sit below your pop songs. And finally, you're romantic. Now you're getting a really slow. So it's mostly around the attack and the release. So again, if you really want something that's just going to hit it hard, you go your, your cinematic. And then uh, from there, you sort of move to the right. And as you go to the right, you get sort of slower attack and a different sort of style, depending on what you want to do. So there you go. That is your options. Whoops, I don't need to save. Oh, can you save? I've never done that. Can we save different styles? <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe you can save your own settings here. Let's just call this one Pete. Um, oh, wow. You can save your own custom presets here. So that's, that's actually very cool. I learned something new here today. So say I wanted one, you know how I did before where I wanted just my cellos and basses. I could actually save that in as my custom Pete preset. And then when I'm doing some atmospheric music, I can have it there ready to go. Very cool. Uh, there's one, uh, actually two final things that I'll talk about strings, because as you can see, I get pretty excited by strings. They're pretty fun to play around with. So the last couple of things are, if you have an external MIDI keyboard, guess what? You can plug it in and play strings. Even when you're in this interface and you're using this one here, the notes mode, you can select an instrument here, grab your MIDI keyboard externally and play along. It's very, very cool. So that's another option. And the final, final thing is, if all of this is a bit too daunting for you and you just like a standard keyboard to play around with, guess what? You can do that too. We can actually add strings in here by hitting the plus button and this time going to keyboards. If we scroll across here, go to your more sounds and under other down the bottom here, you've got three different string sounds. Now it's not your, you don't get to have your independent violin, viola, cello, bass, but you have your whole strings pizzicato, which is that plucking sound, staccato, which is more of a zhung, zhung, and then your sustain, which is your standard longer string sound. So if we go say the staccato strings, Then we can play those in here again. We can change that up by going to the pizzicato or our sustain. So therefore, if you're more familiar around a keyboard, you can use that. And here we can change manually change our attack and release. So if you want that nice padded sound that we were doing before, make your attack nice and slow. And then again, if you want it to be don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can adjust your release so that your release is how quickly it lets go. So I've let go and it keeps going, yeah? But if we bring the release down to maybe half that, then it goes like that. So there you go. Your strings are pretty darn cool. What did we what did we manage to create here in like 10 minutes? We put together this cool little string part using autoplay, using the notes mode uh, and just playing around. We got this. Mm -hmm.